Guys, Loreca.be helps hotel chains make more money with their algorithm. They did about $250,000 in revenue last year, hoping for a million this year. They serve 290 customers, paying on average 250 ish bucks a month. That would be a million dollar run rate. They're building this right now with a team of seven, and Bart Jan owns 100%, totally bootstrapped today, launched it as a student, now 23 years old. We'll see what he does next. Hey folks, my guest today is Bart Jan Yates. He's a 23-year-old entrepreneur who founded Loreca. Loreca is an innovative startup who it boasts the revenue of hotels by an average of 24% by giving visibility optimization for rental properties. All right, Bart Jan, you ready to take us to the top? Hi. Hello, everyone. Hello. Thanks We're for having me. You're here. So just to be clear, kick us off here. You're selling software to hotel owners to, so they can make more money? Um, something like that. We are selling algorithms. So it's not really a software. It's more like an algorithm, but at the end of the ride, they make more money. Okay. And help me understand what your average customer might look like. Can you talk about a customer? Can you name one of them? Yeah, we have. Uh, so right now we have 290 customers all around Western Europe. So it goes from hotels from 20 rooms to hotels with 60, 70 rooms. Uh, most of the time, they are like uh, hotels who really suffered due to the pandemic, due to the recent crises in Europe. And they really need some way out to help them. The other part of our customers are really that's like uh, owners who like try to maximize everything they have and they then they use our algorithm to maximize their revenue. What does that mean? Someone with an extra bedroom will use your algorithm to figure out how they can rent their bedroom? Um, so we have some of them, um, some of those like uh, people who are like uh, trying to make some extra money, like from the beginning days where we were testing our algorithm on different kinds of short-term rentals. But nowadays, our focus is really to the hotels, really the, okay. the bigger... And, and on, average, like, on average, what are these hotels paying you per month to use your algorithm? Uh, it's around 2000 uh, but it depends. As we work with a no-cure, no-pay, so we take a cut on everything we earn more. Okay, so people are paying two thousand dollars U.S. dollars per month on average. Yeah, something like that. It all depends on the you know the region, the the number of rooms, all these things. Okay, well, well, help us understand that, right? So, uh, what do you price per room? So, like our pricing models look look like this. So um, we like calculate based on data the probability that they will obtain like the same revenue as a given year and then we like um we put it equal like it calls discounting and we put it like equal with the market demand inflation all these things and with this we um like to distribute how much money we make extra and from this extra money um we take a cut but this cut is like it all depends on what region, cut do you take height. uh it's most of the time 25 percent. okay so if someone without loreca is going to make a hundred thousand a year but somebody with loreca is going to make two hundred thousand a year you'll take the delta of a hundred thousand dollars and take 25 percent of the upside you helped create or twenty five thousand dollars Yes, but um, important side note there is like when someone would make 100 and now 200, we have to like deduct inflation, mark demand. So like, it's never like an absolute number of 100. It's always like 80 or 70. And then from the 70, we take a cut. Oh, what's going on there, YouTube? Good to see you guys. Now imagine this. You love watching these interviews with SaaS founders, but imagine if we took all of the valuation data out from over 2,807 interviews I've done manually. Saves you a lot of time. Well, we've done this. We've built it into the beautiful interface inside of FounderPath. Check this out. I'll show you how you can access this in a second, but you log in, you connect your Stripe account, you see your valuation real time, you can see what it changed over the past 88 days, and even set goals for valuation this year. Now, the secret valuation is there's many different ways to value a SaaS business. So the reason you're going to see three or four different valuations inside of your FounderPath dashboard, this is all free, by the way, is because depending on who's doing the buying of your SaaS company, you're going to get a different valuation. A VC is going to pay a different valuation. Private equity firm is different. If you're going to do a minority sale, that's different. And if you sell the whole business, that's a different valuation. You can see all those when I hover over here. 
right? So the teal is what a VC would pay. Yellow is what private equity. And red is if you sold the whole thing outright. Now, what's cool about this is this is not built off random data. Again, you guys hear these interviews on YouTube. All these data are built from real-time valuation data points founders share with us on the show. So traction, 1.2 million. Seed round, 3.7 raise. They sold 22% of their business. Go in here and filter by the event. Maybe you only want to see companies that have sold the whole business. Well, here are a bunch that have been acquired, the valuation and the multiple. Maybe you're going out right now and you're raising your seed round. Well, go in here and look at all this recent seed deals that went down, what they raised, what valuation they raised at, and what percent that they sold. There's never been a larger data set of SaaS valuations than what you can get now inside of FounderPath, and we're thrilled to bring it to you. All right, we're gonna go back to the YouTube video here in a second, but if you wanna check this tool out, if you wanna jump in and sign up, you can check it out for free to get your valuation at this link, this link, founderpath.com forward slash products forward slash valuations, or if you go to founderpath.com and hover over products, click on get your valuation here, and go ahead and sign up to give it a whirl. Again, all that valuation data live right inside the platform. I hope to see you there. All right, let's jump back into the interview. When you look at um, how much revenue the 290 hotels on your platform today, how much revenue do you think they'll all do together in 2023? Ooh, that's a very hard question. As you have, Why like... is it hard? I thought that's what your algorithm calculates. You just told me that's what it calculates. Yeah, exactly. But um, we have some of them who like are on board at, um, in, in July last year, meaning that they have like a different time span. So it's hard. But I think um, it's around 22 million that we earned extra um, last year. So this year will be hard with, uh, to predict, but uh, last year it's 22. Million. Okay, just to be clear, the 220 to 290 hotels you're working with today, the ones that were you working with last year, you helped them earn 22 million more than what their base was, right? Exactly. And you take 25% of that? Exactly. So 25% of 22 million is, you guys did about 5.5 million in revenue last year? No, that's a very good question. Um, we, we we had a very long um, proof of work period where we like we were working at very low margins, just like um, so we could like build a proper business case to go to uh, these bigger hotels um, and ask for like the the revenue model we use today. So it's like not even that long, like I think three months uh, that we're working with this model. But okay, Bart, Jan, I don't want to. I don't. Wanna, I don't want to lose my audience here because like this is a little bit confusing, right? So you you told me you make twenty five percent, but then you don't make twenty five percent, and you told me you charge two thousand dollars per hotel with two hundred ninety hotels, which would mean you're doing five hundred eighty thousand dollars per month in revenue. It sounds like neither of those numbers are accurate. So how do you price? What do you charge? It's twenty five percent, but important to know is that from all of our hotels, like um, there's a big range. Due to our early days, we still have like the little clients, um, bed and breakfast from three rooms, but we also have the bigger. So it's very hard to put like an absolute number. But the first number I saw when I popped up my screen was a 22. So it's very hard to like really determine them. Well, what, Bartjan, what do you think you will do this year in total revenue? Uh, we hope um, to be 1 million certainly. This is like our like least least that we should have. Okay. And and what does that mean? You did 200,000 last year or 300,000 last year? Yeah, something like that. Okay. This is great. Well, I guess t give me the backstory here now that we understand the financial model. When did you launch the company? What year? Um, July 2021 as a student. It's like an extra holiday uh, merit. Okay. And now are you still in school or did you drop out to build the company? I graduated a couple of months later and now I have a full-time team who is um, building the company with me. How many folks are on the team today? We are um, seven in total. Seven people. And are you the only founder? Yes. Okay, so you're sole founder. You own 100%. No co-founder? Exactly. 
And are you bootstrapped today or have you raised capital? We are bootstrapped. We are uh, raising capital is still on the plans, but uh, it's something we have to decide. Why do you need capital to build this business? Why not keep 100% in bootstrap? Exactly. That's the thing we need to uh, decide if we are going the way we are because we we are already obtaining wonderful results. Um, or are we going to raise capital? This is still a question that's on the table uh, and we hope like in the soon future to make a decision about this. Uh, who, who is we though? I mean, you're the sole owner, right? So you're making all the decisions. Yes, but I have uh, luckily a wonderful team who is assisting me with the big questions. Do they own equity though or no? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Interesting. Okay. And I guess, how did you get to this pricing model? You know, it's very difficult. We heard you sort of trying talking through it earlier. It's very difficult, this pricing. It's hard to model. Why not just do something very simple, a price per room per year or something like that? Because like... Um, for us, of course, it's a very, very good sales perspective. We say, like, we are certain our algorithm works. It sounds a bit arrogant, but like, we are certain that it works. Um, and that's why we just take a cut of everything we earn more. So, in the worst case, a hotel that uses us and we don't work, we don't earn extra money for them. They don't need to pay us. So, like, a hotel by this, by this pricing model has nothing to lose by working with us. And also it incentivize us to like make the most money for the hotel. Yeah, but it's not just that. It's so much extra work because you have to defend the extra money you're making the hotel. The process to actually capture the revenue is so much more difficult. Exactly, exactly. But luckily, hotel software is pretty advanced in this kind of things. Well, I mean, we heard you talk through the calculations earlier and you kept using words like it's confusing, it's hard, it's tough, it's hard to estimate. I'm not sure. I mean, why not just charge a flat fee? And if you're not delivering value, they'll churn and cancel. Uh, that's also an option that's on the table. Uh, like for us, of course, we are with this pricing model, we are bound to seasonality. So if um, hospitality is doing bad or business will be doing bad as well. Um, but it's still something we're exploring. But as of today, this is our revenue. Okay. Talk to us a little bit about growth here. It's impressive that you've got 290 customers less than 24 months after launch. How did you hustle to get 290 paying customers already? So I launched as a student, which um, so I'm from Belgium, and in Belgium, like if a student launches a company, they they get like a lot of press, uh, a lot of like magazines, and so so this is where like all the start came, and then I did like the basics, really like the Mailchimp's, the the blog writing, the podcasting, all the basic things, and this led us to having 290. We are also in, a, in an industry, so the hotel industry, which is very familiar. So like, you know, one hotel and one street says, okay, these guys, you have to work with them and then it starts spreading. But marketing and rebranding is something that's uh, for this month, actually. Mm -hmm. What you mentioned podcasts, you have your own podcast or you go on other people's podcasts? Um, I have done some podcasts before or some podcasts before, uh, and we always had some wonderful results. Bartjan, the question is, do you have your own podcast or do you only go on others? No, no, no I don't have. Okay. That. And how many subscribers do you have on your MailChimp list today? Ooh, that's a hard question. Uh, I think it's around 8,000, but... How um we were in a collaboration with some local government uh, where we were able to get a big portion so it's not eight thousand uh like that subscribe to our website uh, but we received some of them okay um well i mean is the email list a way that you get new customers Yes, we send out like a two weekly blog, uh, so a two weekly newsletter, uh, and we always have wonderful like click through ratios. How many folks usually open and click? We are around 30%. So 30% open, so that's about 2,000 out of the 8,000 open, and then how many click? No, two, uh, sorry, 30% of everyone clicks through our website reader blog. So if you send out an email to 8,000 people, you're saying 2, 000, that's going to generate 2,000 clicks to your website? Yes, exactly. We're seeing you, every time we send out a blog, it's crazy. 
are you sure that's accurate? That would be almost like 6x the top click-through performance I've ever heard of from an email list. Yeah, I can check it right now. Um, so just to be clear, you send an email to 8,000 and you know, six, 7,000 of them open and then like 2,000 of them click in the email through to your blog. That's what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. That's a really high click-through rate. How do you get so many people clicking? We are lucky that like, um, so we are only like doing some local blogging and local newsletters. So like our blog is in multiple languages, but our newsletter is uh, like the people we send it to is not. So we are lucky that, so we are in Flanders and Belgium that a lot of people need services like us, like we uh, really need companies like us to like help them um, move to the next step. And this is why our blog is like heavily written. Explain to me how your process is. I mean, you're a startup with constrained resources. Writing takes a lot of work. Your last blog post on October 16th is titled The Seven Most Important KPIs in the Hotel Business. How did you identify that title as something you should write about? Um, I will be honest. I had like um, several marketing people already in my company know the last one left. And the, uh, the new one is on board it last week. Uh, so it's something they decide to do some research about it, but it's not, not my expertise. Okay, Barjan, on that note, let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite business book? Oh, it's uh, the book from Jerome Belfort. Uh, I can't remember the name, so... Uh, All right, number, number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Oh, I really like um, a Belgian guy called Bart Verha. He has like um, a construction company. And what's the name of the company? You Place. You Place. All right. Number three, what's your favorite online tool for building Loreca? It should be Webflow. I uh, spend a lot of time on our website just because I want everything to be perfect. And number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Oof. I, I'm happy if I get around five. Five. Okay. And what's your situation? Married, single, kids? I have a wonderful girlfriend. Not married. Okay. No kids. And you're 24, right? 23. 23. Last question. Something you wish you knew when you were 20. Um... Not to be too naive in business. Uh, it's something I had to learn the hard way um, and something I wish I knew a little bit more early. Guys, Loreca.be helps hotel chains make more money with their algorithm. They did about $250,000 in revenue last year, hoping for a million this year. They serve 290 customers, paying on average 250 ish bucks a month. That would be a million dollar run rate. They're building this right now with a team of seven, and Bart Jan owns 100% totally bootstrapped today. Launched it as a student, now 23 years old. We'll see what he does next. Bart Jan, thanks for taking us to the top. Thank you. One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers. They try and do a deal live, and the founder shares back-end dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it. And the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember, these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash Slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right. I'll be in the comments. See ya.